I told somebody, I said, when I go out, I want to be treated like a lady. Right, and that's what I like about you. You don't say, I want to be treated like a woman, because I never, and we discussed this, I don't know what a female feels like, mm. but I know what a lady is treated like. What's your name again? Danny Faye. That's what I go by. Nice to meet you. I'm Matt. Thank you for doing this. I don't know. I feel like cross-dressing is um, something that happens a lot behind the scenes and not in front of a camera. So I really appreciate you being open with your story. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I'll try to give you as much information as I can. Last week on the show, we arrived at N2 Looking Glass, Stephanie's salon that caters to cross-dressers in Las Vegas, and we sat down with Cherry. They think, well, it's a, it's a man in the dress. And it's not. It's not. Cross-dressing, it's still such a... Um, a secret society. Correct. A lot of times people wouldn't want to be on camera talking about it. True, because there's so much stereotype about it. You know, if you're a cross-dresser, you're some sort of a deviant, or you're less of a man. Are you a straight man? I'm bisexual. So the one you're going to be interviewing, extremely sane. Yes, somewhat conservative. I would say more middle of the road like I am. Since he's retired, this is, did he just come in? This? Yes. Hi, nice to meet like you, that. Matt. Nice to meet you. Hi, pleasure to meet you. Thank he you so much for doing this. He keeps his own, does all his Oh, they're thing. gorgeous. When did you first find yourself getting involved with cross-dressing or at least being introduced to it? Well, I, I knew when I was 12 years old, you know, I was a little different. I liked feminine things. I sang a lot in choirs. I would have loved to be in uh, a lot of the musicals, but when I was growing up, that was not an acceptable thing to do. You know, you were tagged as, okay, queer, whatever, and ostracized. Whenever I had the opportunity, I would venture to do something, but never go out. Like wearing your mom's clothes or things like that? Something like that, yeah. I have a couple of celebrities that cross-dress that the public would gag to know that some the sexy ass muscle man likes to put a dress on and his dick between his legs. It's and fascinating. Around. It is. It is fascinating. I like the the mind fuck better than the fuck. How did you find? Like, how did the crossdressers find you? How did okay. you find the crossdressers? So this guy came up to me, and he's like, "So you do makeup?" I'm like, "I do," and I said, "I love it." And he goes, "Have you ever?" taken a guy and made him look like a girl. I'm like, well, I've worked on drag queens before because I was doing drag shows. And he's like, no, 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 drag. I don't want drag. And I'm like, you know, and being in the gay world at the time, I was like, what's drag? What the, that opened the door for me. He's been a client of mine for 30 plus years. It's just like a word of mouth situation now? It, with me it is. Um, I do have a little bit of advertisement online, um, but it's word of mouth because I'm extremely discreet. You have all different types of dressers in different mindsets. And some of them lean to being more trend, mm -hmm. even though they haven't had body work done to do that, um, mindset wise. And some of them just straight up gay. And then others of them are more bisexual. And then a few of them are very straight. <laughs> How long were you married for? 35 years. And how soon into that did you tell her? This Real late. Is... Real late. 20, 25 years. Wow. So before that, were you still dressing up just without her catching you or what? Yes. Yes. And I always used to tell her, I said, you don't really know me. And that that bothered her for a while until I came, came out to her. How did you tell her? I was very anxious. I was very stressed. And I just said, you know, here's the thing that's causing some of the stress. Mm. And we talked about it. She was amazing. You know, she tried to learn a little bit, you know, what is this, what is this about, you know? Because uh, she said, well, I know you're not gay because my gaydar would have gone on long, long ago. <clears throat> she actually watched the uh, Bruce Jenner movie. She wanted me to watch it with her. And I said, don't. I said, you, you need to just go ahead and do it. She read up and a lot of that stuff. So she says, but a lot of the things that Jenner said, I've heard come from you also. But the interesting thing is with, with Caitlyn Jenner, she's a trans woman. Exactly. And that's, that's one of the things I said, you know, if you have enough money and everything, you can do that kind of stuff. Do you think that if you had all the money in the world that you would transition? 
No, not now. Uh, maybe when I was younger, I might have. But my family is very homophobic. So that wouldn't have been very acceptable. I don't know. Uh, different circumstances, different times. That was one of the questions my wife said. She goes, well, do you want to get surgeries or anything? I said, no. No, I don't want to do that. That's not in my cards, especially, you know, at my age. To do that is just, <clears throat> no. It's just a waste of money as far as I'm concerned. You know, do you feel happy being presenting as a man in public? Yeah, I do. Um, and then, you know, I feel happy when I'm a, a female out in public. I get that some of these people come in if they were younger, um, they probably would have transitioned. And transition nowadays means different things to different people. It's not like when I was young, and I still believe this, if you're going to transition, it's not just the way you feel, it's what you do outwardly. I mean, I usually like to show my boobs off and push them all up. I mean, I bought them, so I might as well show them. Hell yeah. And it's the same way. And I put makeup on. Why? I want them to see me. Yes, yes. Uh, it's just the thing. But the dressers, um, there's different mindsets. And some of them... It's a very big sexual fish for them. Mm -hmm. And then others of them, it's not at all. Mm -hmm. um, others of them, it's, it's a hobby where they can, they're like an alpha male in the daytime and their job is really hard. So it's like kind of like jigsaw puzzles, I guess. You know, it's a hobby. Mm -hmm. And this allows them to get rid of their stress. They can think about other things and family or their job. I'm gonna give you one of these caps because it's a better cap than the one you have. I literally don't see you as trans. Like I keep forgetting that you're trans oh, yeah? because you're so feminine to me. Oh, but thank you. But I, you know what? I, I'm just, I don't feel it. I mean, I just feel me. I know I'm never gonna be a female, um, but I'm just living my best life. Um, I've changed a lot over the years. My mind about a lot of stuff because of living experience. Um, there's work I want to have done. I mean, I look at Blair. I know you know Blair. She's but gorgeous. I look at Blair and I'm like, oh, that hateful cunt. She's so beautiful. She's and, and, and that's where a lot of hate comes from, too, is because she really is that beautiful. But then I have to keep in mind, what is she? She's not even 30 yet. <laughs> so She's young, yeah. I, I, so I, that goes through my head because in the, in the trans world, it's like, and I try to get this across to the girls, my girls. It's like, yeah, looks matter. I love what Joan Rivers used to say. If you're rich, there's no excuse not to look good. If you're a woman, there's no excuse not to look good. There's wet and wild makeup out there even. And I try to get that across. But what's more important is the inside and how you feel. And if putting makeup on when you're a father, a grandfather, an uncle, whatever, and putting makeup on makes you feel good, do it. If that's what makes you feel good, because you're not hurting anyone. I agree. So if you have a cross to come in to get her makeup done, how much does that cost? It's one twenty-five, but unlike some places, they get their brushes, they get makeup that they get to keep too, and they're not going on stage. They're going out in the real world. A lot of them, I'm like Cherry, she likes to go to the clubs. So I mean, you can use other stuff besides you know, Gaga and yes. Mac and all of that because they're not trying to be overly theatrical. Now with Cherry, I do her eyes up a lot. You know, she does a little bit darker lipstick than she usually likes. Um, but she has such gorgeous blue eyes. So so will you keep this on and go out tonight or Oh yes, yes. Oh yeah, so this it holds up for eighteen hours. Yeah, I'll go out tonight. So what are the plans? Where are you gonna go? I'm probably gonna go over to the garage for a little while. Cherry was talking about, you know, the judgment also within trans women and yeah. cross dressers. There's a lot of that and I try to stop that. Because the only thing separating us, I mean, because we all have our own feelings, um, the only thing that really separates us is body work. I'm sorry, you're not trans. Even though you may feel like one, you're not trans unless you've had some kind of body work. You've had to cross over. Trans, Latin, meaning to cross. What have you done other than feel this way? And, oh, I'm on a light hormone. There's no such thing as a light hormone. That's like being half pregnant. You're either on hormones or not. And hormones don't necessarily make you trans. Body work makes you that. And then living that way. And there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with me on that, but fuck them. You want more of a natural look, right? Just whatever. You think. whatever. No, I'm asking. She's gonna go out. A transsexual, it's not the same thing as a transvestite. Or, uh, it, okay. 
Let me break it down. I'm trying to get this straight in my head so it makes sense what I'm thinking. So, because terminology has changed, but nothing's really changed. It's like, you know, that's blue. Like in the Middle Ages or ancient times, Roman times, they didn't have a word for blue, but people knew the sky was blue. They just didn't have a word for it. Um, they have like light blue is blue. There's different shades of blue, but it's still blue. Mm -hmm. um, the way I was raised, the way the girls that I came out with were, it's like, it kind of reminds me of Tu Wong Fu a little bit. You're just a boy. Go get some work done. You know, if you're that serious. But then sometimes we get so caught up in wanting to be real, wanting to be passable, you forget that, yeah, it's your life, but you forget to enjoy it. Mm. Because you get, and, and we, what I see more than anything is people running from their sexuality more than their gender. Mm. And I, there are two sexes. I mean, there is a third, and that's rare, you know, where they have both parts. Um, but that's very, very, very rare. And you're never born, I think that, the tran world, we use the wrong terminology for the straight world or what they're calling the cis world now. You're not born male, I mean a man. You're not born a woman. You're born male or female. You become a man and you become a woman. I can be a woman, but I'm never going to be a female. I can be a woman in what society thinks that women should look and act like. Interesting. And I'm a little too mouthy because most of the genetic females I know are as mouthy as I am. But... Honestly, within our world, I'm way too mouthy, and I know that. But I didn't put up with this from my own family. Why am I going to put up with some guy that wants to stick his up my ass? Or some guy that is judgmental because he's a misogynist? Mm -hmm. Why am I going to put up with well, you? Get the fuck away from me. My dick's bigger than yours anyway. Um, <laughs> I make a point to learn. Whenever I have to get really fancy or, you know, something really nice then I'll come to her and do it. But, you know, they said, well, how do you, do you do this? I said, yeah. And they said, well, I said, when they do this, I listen and watch. So I don't have to rely on somebody else to do the, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, you guys got me mixed up with somebody that has money. What I see from a lot of dressers is um, that they're afraid to tell their spouse because they're afraid to be alone, that their spouse is going to leave them, judge them. And a lot of times that's true. But if you can't be happy with yourself, how are you supposed to be happy with someone else? I encourage all of my clients, tell your wife. I've lost clients because I told their wife and then the wife would go, I can do that makeup. Let me get in there. And women are aggressive. Like, this is my man. I'm going to do in... But a lot of men would love that. And then some men are like, no, I have too many toys. I'm, I, I, I don't want to tell her. And I encourage and I encourage. I have one that he's come out as trans. He's a little more probably what people would call non-binary. He's a billionaire. Mm, good for His him. wife's a psychologist. For years, he, I traveled everywhere with him doing makeup. And he's tiny. And I even when he had no makeup on, I had a hard time seeing a guy there and he's so much fun and I kept telling him tell your wife tell your wife she is you know she's in the nut field so she got to understand this a lot better than any of us but she didn't mm -hmm. and they're still together so he lives on one side of the country she lives on the other side of the country wow. and um, I felt bad for that um, but he goes, we can't divorce. She wouldn't have her lifestyle. I wouldn't have my lifestyle. I go, yo, I would still be rich. He goes, but not like I am. So he really, that told me what was really important to him was money more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Well, and I had such a hard time whenever I told, came out to my wife. And uh, yeah, the fear is she's going to leave you. Mm. She will not accept it, you know, and and she was my little love of my life and I couldn't do it. But then the stress was so much in my life at that point in time that I had to say, 
this is what's going on. Just from an outside point of view, if she was and is the love of your life, then she will accept you for who you are. Exactly. And she did that. She was confused. She, I don't know, I think she actually Didn't called. Did they become best girlfriends too? Like she all went shopping together? Yeah, we went, she bought me a couple dresses and she said, oh, I think this would look good on you. And so she was trying very hard to, you know, understand uh that this tangled up mess. I, I just was took it off and I said, I threw it. Now, that, that was, was the other thing that dead people, dog. that's what some people would always say that I've always thought you were gay. And I said, well, why is that? It says, you use your hands a lot. Yeah, you are right now. You're already transforming. I already feel the, uh, the aura changing a bit. Uh, but just this on your hand, is it where it needs to be? Before we start... I would always be pretty much coordinated. You guys could be sisters. You guys could literally be sisters. We look a lot alike, naturally. She, uh, I do her makeup, and I have to be careful because she naturally looks like Reba with those eyes. She actually has Reba's actual real color, and we just need to make her nostrils a little bigger, and her upper lips is bigger than Reba's, but when it's not there, it's like, does she look like Reba's older sister? So, Danny, how are you feeling, you know, dressed like this? I feel like my real self or the feelings that I've had most of my life. Uh, is that from the clothing and makeup? I think that adds to it, but it's basically the way I, you know, when I look this way, I feel good. And yeah, the clothing does accent, you know, and I will wear short dresses. Yes, uh, you do, you do, you have great legs. This is for the right wing. They get confused because we talk about feeling so much, the way we feel, and they're talking about, well, none of it's biology or anything, but I see both sides to this. Um, you know, you have to take people's feelings in consideration. Right. Also, but on the devil's side, um, just because you feel a certain way doesn't make you a certain way. Mm. I know that's, that does well, not mean, that's not, I'm not coming for you on that. No. I'm not, I'm just putting that out it's there. It's just, but they, the a the clothing is an accent. Right. But you enjoy being a guy, right? Yeah. I mean, you tell me you do. Yeah. You know? I mean, I see you go pussy hunting every now and then. Oh, shh. <laughs> my curiosity and my question for you is, you know, you have lost so many people in your life by living in your authentic truth and coming out as trans. And is the issue with dressers, cross-dressers for those that are confused, is that they can just take it off. And they can live yeah. their normal life, and they can have their wife and their family, and they don't lose things like the trans people lose. I don't have a problem with people that like to dress up. This is the problem I do have. And I have someone, she won't come back and see me anymore. And I worked on her for about 17 years. She said that she was very jealous of the trans women, but she will lie and say she's trans. And we, I was sitting in the tree bar one night. I came, well, she was there. I came in and there was a guy that was there that we all know. And he's like, oh, Stephanie, I haven't seen you forever. And I low cut top on, boobs all pushed out. You know, it's a Saturday night out on the make for it all. And um, he's not my type, but we're friends. He goes, can you, and she was drunk. He goes, can you believe this fucking bitch just hit on me and tried to get 300 bucks out of me? Mm. And she turns around and she goes, yes, I am. Some of these dressers get this fantasy of wanting to be a hooker, and she had a great job, a great home, didn't need to do any of this kind of stuff, and it left me with a very bad taste in my mouth because there were girls that have to do that. Mm -hmm. And they have to do porn because there's no other way for them to make money, or they were kicked out of their home and they're very young, um, and they have no schooling or anything. So I used to go in because there were a lot of hookers, and I would tell them, Nothing wrong with prostitution. I'm not saying go and do it, but there's nothing wrong with it. Don't feel ashamed about it. Do what you have to do, but use that money to put yourself through school. How long did it take for your wife to come around and start to embrace that side of you? She started slow, and she actually bought me a couple dresses. You know, she said, well, if you want to dress here at home or whatever, that makes you feel more comfortable, you know. But, you know, she was just a unique person, uh, one that you would never find in another lifetime, I don't believe. It, it sounds like she was the perfect partner for you because she embraced and let you be who you are. Right. And then yet I was still 
what she would say, knight in shining armor. The, one of the things that my wife did say, she says, you know, when you are in female mode, you are so much nicer. Is it because you feel like yourself when you're when dressed as a female? I think so. I think I, I feel myself. I think that part of me starts to come out. You had mentioned off camera, and if you don't want to talk about this, tell me not. I won't put this in here, but that your, that your wife has passed. Yes. Yeah. I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah, we were, we were married uh, 35 years. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, they don't, they don't understand. Uh, it's unique to find a person that you can be with. I mean, it wasn't all, you know, peaches and cream, but she was my best friend and I was her best friend. And you rarely find that quality out there. She was my only love in my life. How long has it been? It's about seven years this, la this last month. Do you still think about her every single day? Oh, yes. Yes. I think about her all the time. And I'll sit out sometimes at the, pa at the pool or at the uh, on the patio and we'll talk. You know, I'll have my drink and, and we'll talk because I believe that she still hears me. And... and uh, Hopefully she just pushed me in the right directions at times. Has that changed your cross-dressing in terms of, are you dressing more often like a female now? Yeah, well, going out, yes. I think I do more because I think it kind of made her a little uncomfortable. I don't think she totally got it, but the fact that she tried meant so much to me. Have you started dating again? No. Do you want to be? I don't know. I would like to probably find a companion to do some things. I, I don't know, I just have that feeling it's like I would be comparing them to her and that wouldn't be fair to them. I understand that. If you could get to a place where, you know, she's always gonna be your number one, but another companion could be nice. That's it, you know, to share, you know, things, you know, go travel, do some other stuff that that person wouldn't feel upset one way or another how I look. Because that's something you're taking into consideration too is now I got to tell them this kind of secret that I like to cross dress and how they handle that because it is such a secret society that people don't really, it's so stigmatized still, you know? It is. And th that's the, the thing, you know, somebody said, well, you're going to do it. I said, you know, I'm going to be honest with the person up front that, you know, this is who I am. Seeing this new generation of it being a lot more, I guess, understood and accepted for the trans youth and trans people coming up, do you wish that you were born in this generation? Uh, I don't know. I think I would say no because I would miss everything before. I'm happy to see that there's more accepting, but I think my past and things I've learned and everything else, I. I couldn't get rid of that. I think that was very important to me. My time at N2 Looking Glass is just one of those moments that I will never forget, but I feel like I think that every single week because my show has really opened up doors and introduced me to people and to facets of my community that I would have never had the opportunity to meet had it not been for the show. I just feel so full and so enriched as a human being because of it. And wherever I go and whoever I meet, I always think of you and really thankful that you're following me and joining me along on this journey. I'm heading to both Houston, Texas and Nashville, Tennessee next month and I am so excited about it. If you live there or if you know someone who does and you are interested in being on the show, make sure to email me a little description of you and your story and also your social media links and I will get back to you. I'm always looking for new stories and new interesting people to you know give my platform to to share their voice so if that is you make sure you reach out we are almost at 200,000 subscribers which is just so wild to think about you know when i had started this show two and a half years ago i really had no idea where i was going to go i had no idea what i was even doing i just knew that i had this hunger to learn from people in my community and to hear their stories and i'm just so thankful to rob for trusting me with the first episode and I'm so thankful to myself for picking up that camera and trusting in myself. And I'm so thankful for all of you who have really you know, come along on this journey with me. And especially in the times that we're in and with the queer community, you know, constantly getting vilified. It just feels like such an honor to be able to be someone that can 
platform amazing voices in our community that we may never have heard of beforehand and share their stories and show people outside of our community that we are full of layered and unique, strong and resilient and truly beautiful people. And that is really, that is really the goal of my show. I just feel really grateful. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you're subscribed. Make sure to comment me your thoughts and I will see you next week.